Hi there. So I've transferred this stone and I'm putting in some main facets there on a pretty worn out 600 mesh centered lap. I'm leaving a nice thick girdle for the moment because I've still got to do pre-polish. And because we have plenty of room now for the table, right, that is for about 50%, maybe 45% of the width of the stone. So rather than keep bringing down these crown facets, I've put these in at 41 degrees. I started touching them in around 38 and realized that I was going to be able to make the crown a couple of degrees steeper. And then what I'll do is actually split these main facets horizontally. So these are in at about 41. I'll touch in some around the table at oh, probably about 36. And then I'll pre-polish them, cut and polish the table, and we'll have a look in a minute. Okay, thanks. So I've just touched in that second tier of crown main facets there. You can see I've got one tier at 41 degrees and then I've got a second tier there at, I ended up putting them in at 37. So now I'm just going to pre-polish that top tier of facets. So I have just very roughly pre-polished that top tier of facets there because I'm going to cut and polish the table, completely finish the table facet. And I don't want this rough ground 600 meeting up to somewhere where I'm trying to polish because I'll get tiny little scratches. So at least a pre-polish here means that when I go to polish the table, it's meeting a nice smooth surface. So Changing the angles that I've cut the crown mains at to make the crown a little bit steeper, I have been able to maintain pretty much the original diameter of the table of the stone, of the table facet of the stone. I didn't have to cut it down too much. Whereas if I had have, you know, put these facets in at say 37, which is you know, somewhere considered the standard crown main angle for sapphire then I would have had to cut a lot more material to get down to a good proportion of the diameter for this table facet so we we're keeping as much material as possible and it's good to be able to do this especially because it is a very light and bright and valuable material so we want to keep as much as possible while also maximizing the scintillation, the brightness, the performance of the gem. So I've just pre-polished the table there, the table facet. It can be one of the hardest facets to polish because it is pretty much the biggest facet on most gems. So you want a really good, fine pre-polish. You don't want any subsurface pitting from your grinding lab. A really smooth surface for which to then polish. You've got to love it when you're polishing the table and you can see right into the, the pavilion and the culette of the stone. So I just know it's going to be amazing. So now I've evened up those um, two tiers of mains. You can see there, there's a, a tier near the table and a different tier at the girdle. There's no exact proportions. For these, it's just a matter of balancing the stone, making sure the crown and the pavilion are balanced. You don't want a super shallow crown with a deep pavilion or vice versa. And what I'm going to do now is just put in the star facets 
and they will reach from the table down to the where the two tiers meet so I'll just adjust the angle until I find whatever angle that is so there's the star facets faceted in now on 1800 and they're just meeting at the table and they are reaching down to that first tier of facets now I've cut them in at about 27 degrees I do like a star facet that reaches a bit deeper than the standard shallower ones in a lot of sapphire designs but it's really up to the individual I mean of course it, it's an aesthetic property I just like my crowns a little bit more hmm, I don't know different proportioned to the standard sapphire crown and of course you've you've got to think about the way the light refracts through the stone so if you've got a computer program you can always put your different angles in and experiment and it depends on the color of your stone I wouldn't be doing a deeper crown and split facets if this was a darker gem but I think this is going to come out just really beautiful and so just a quick look I've now put in the break or girdle facets so that's it we're done with faceting you can see the nice the mane there has a nice split here this can be handy actually in a darker stone if you want to put more facets if it's going to be really really dark anyway like a blue black and you put more facets on the crown then you do get more reflection of light which is what we're seeing there coming off the, the this stone so if you're not going to get much refraction anyway sometimes putting an interesting design cutting an interesting shape can add a bit of character to a really really dark stone so I'm just going to polish this one up then I ended up putting those break facets in around 47 I'm just going to polish um, polish the crown now and that's it it'll be off the top yay so there's the finished gem I've got a little torch shining in there so that color isn't really representative of what it will be once it comes off the top it's just to show you There's a little bit of silk there too you can see the silk there in the those blue zones because they um, the root hole needles are reflecting the light from the torch there's like an eye in the middle that's really cool every stone is different all right so I'm gonna get it off the top now and see if I can get a half decent video for you oops but all that beautiful refraction of light plus the re reflection coming from those facets as well okay so it's night time here so it's really hard to capture the the true colors on video it's got a lot of yellow in it and I think outside tomorrow I think it will capture a lot more green green and greeny yellows video right now seems to be really washing it out but it's amazing 2.2 carats get some better videos tomorrow guys okay see you later oh that's a good angle mm. sorry about the focus